Max, good to see you. How how are you feeling? Great. Uh, excited that um, we're out practicing and finally getting things rolling for sure. Yeah. What what have the last five days been like? Uh, they've been a little bit busy. Um, just getting back in the swing of things. It's it's been fun, honestly, to say the least. Uh, a lot of smiles on all of our faces. Uh, we're all definitely happy we're out here. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, obviously, anytime a new head coach comes in, there's kind of a feeling out period, a transition as everyone gets on the same page and, and learns the the system. From your perspective, what was it like to try to get to know Rolovich and this new staff during a you know pandemic that kept everybody apart for the first five months? Yeah, I mean, we, we had a month or two with him before the whole pandemic struck, but uh, one thing that was there was just a player's guy, a player's coach. Um, he's he's been there for us ever since the bat, uh, and it's, it's been evident with everything that we we uh, we as a team have gone through with losing our teammate Beekman, and then obviously the pandemic. That he's he cares about his players a whole lot, and it's it's shown. He's he's made a lot of effort towards us, which is awesome, and it's just someone you want to play for. And then I mean the whole coach and staff is just just the same way. They're all great people, so. We're, we're really enjoying it. You mentioned the loss of your teammate, and obviously you guys have had so much that, that you've had to deal with over the last six months in general. How have you personally been able to process and, and deal with, with all of the things that are going on around you? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's obviously tough. Um, a lot of love for Bryce. Um, we're just going to have him here with our, in our spirits every single day and this whole season for him. Um, and obviously with COVID, things, things have been challenging for everyone, so just – adjusting day in, day out, and trying to just go with the flow and make things happen. So tell me what excites you the most about this new offense. Um, running the ball, obviously. <laughs> um, the running shoot's definitely different than Mike Leach's air raid. So uh, I'm excited for just the different different concepts of run reads that I have, um, some power, some outside zone, and different types of speed off and stuff. Um, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be a lot more explosive. Um, I'm, I'm excited for myself in it and the rest of the running backs. I think we're really going to enjoy it. You know, I'm curious, Max, how many carries per game would be like the perfect number of carries if, if you were calling the shots? Yeah, I don't care. As many as they want to give me, I'll be happy with, but uh, I'll definitely make the most out of all my opportunities. You no doubt you will. You're you're on the Doug Walker Award watch list, which was no surprise, but you're the only running back in the country on the Bolitnikoff Award watch list. Do you have any predictions or feel for how many receptions you might have this season? Yeah, honestly, with this uh with this offense, the running back doesn't get get out of the box and get as many receptions as I was used to with the air raid, but uh obviously there's still screens that can happen and then uh, a little bit of slot action maybe as well. So I should be interested to see how that plays out and speaking of things playing out anything you can tell us about the the quarterback battle from your perspective I mean that word battle is a key word right there it's a it's a good battle the four guys um that we got going right now are really just attacking practice each and every day and I couldn't tell you who's ahead of who because one day someone's like really balling out and next day the next guy's really balling out it's close and it's going to be a competition that's going to go on throughout all camp I'm thinking it you know, Max, obviously you're one of the faces of this program, and, and I think everybody's expecting big things from you this year. But I, I want you to tell me, if you would, a name or two of a teammate who maybe people aren't talking about right now, but who everybody will be talking about when all is said and done. Yeah, I mean, as far as looking at freshmen that I've been watching, um, Shaw Smith, uh, Wade, he's been balling out at corner. And then Joey Hobart from California, uh, slot receiver, he's been doing well. And then um, a lot of younger guys are going to have to step up this year because of, I mean, opt-outs, injuries, sickness with COVID and stuff. So, I mean, we're gonna, there's going to be a lot of faces and names that a lot of people aren't familiar with that are going to be stepping up in a big role. So I'm excited for a lot of the guys, and it's going to be a great season. You mentioned opt-outs. Was, was that anything that crossed your mind? Did you consider opting out? No, I only considered opting in. When everything was going on, I was like, I want to play. This is this is why I'm here and I love football and I want to play no matter what it takes. <laughs> you know, we hear a lot about the new testing protocols and obviously the daily testing, which has been huge and all the safety measures in place just in general. Can you sort of walk me through what that actually looks like? Maybe give me a rundown of, you know, high level, what a day in your life is like right now. Yeah. Um, pretty much wake up early and test, get tested. Um, it's a little no swab like everyone's familiar with. And then, Results come back within a couple hours and you're good to go, uh, whether whether or not you're 
testing positive or not, you know. <laughs> and then from then on, is it pretty much business as usual? Yeah, um, obviously still remaining social distance and all the safe protocols. We still practice all that, but uh, yeah, pretty much just we're going. Um, okay, last thing for me, and then I'll turn it over to, to the rest of the media for questions. But it, your coach carried on the, the great tradition of having, you know, Old Crimson at college game day. I think it's whatever, 240 plus straight appearances. I'm assuming that you saw the footage or live him as the, the flag bearer on ESPN a few weeks ago. Yeah, I did. That was cool. <laughs> how, would you, how would you grade out his performance there? Yeah, uh, I thought he was waving that flag pretty well. He had a pretty good form and uh, seemed, to, seemed to be pretty, doing pretty well with it. I think all the Cougar fans loved it as well. <laughs> I enjoyed his game face. He was all, he was all business. Oh yeah, he's always all business. <laughs> all right, Max. Well, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it. And uh, looking forward to watching you on the field this year. I appreciate it. Thank you. And we'll turn it over to media for Q&A now. And to lead us off, uh, as a reminder, um, use the raise hand function to get in the queue. And Theo Lawson uh, will lead us off. Hey, Max, can you hear me? I just, yeah, I just sorry. Wanted to... sorry, I was drinking some water. I just wanted to follow up on, on, on the question about opting out. Did, did you talk to anyone in your family, any coaches about, about that at all? Or did, did you just kind of make that decision on your own with that, without kind of um, yeah, consulting no, I, anyone? I made that decision on my own. Uh, I love the game of football. I would never opt out. <laughs> can, you, can, can you speak to how well conditioned the team is right now compared to most years where obviously the guys didn't have the same um, opportunities in the offseason to, to kind of use a weight room? And can you, can you kind of explain what you did yourself to, to stay in shape and, and how, how in shape the team is right now? Yeah, um, honestly, it wouldn't be as bad as you thought. Um, a lot of guys definitely have been putting in the work and the hours because they know that they got to be ready at any moment. Um, so, honestly, we're all in pretty good shape, but obviously there's still a lot more work to be done. we still got 24 more days, 24 more opportunities until our first game. So, uh, for me personally, uh, it was a weird off season, obviously, with access to weight rooms and stuff. I mean, uh, like prime COVID, I bought myself a bike and I was biking every single hill and running every single hill in Pullman just, just to stay active. But uh, I slowly got access to a, to a weight room and then just kept training and then things slowly started to come back together here as far as everything. So it hasn't been too bad, but uh, yeah, I think we're in pretty decent shape right now. Okay, our next question will come from Brenna Green. Hi, Max. Um, did you ever consider transferring um, when the Pac-12 decided that um, they were not going to have football in the fall originally? No, uh, personally for me, it was tough news. I mean, it is for a lot of people. It was for a lot of people, but uh, I'm faithful to Cougar Nation and everything they've done for me here. So uh, I wanted to stick it out here and plan to finish my whole career here. Okay, next question will come from Lars Hansen. Hey, Max, how's it going, man? <clears throat> Good, how are you? Good. Um, so I just wanted to get your thoughts on the potential of a 9 a.m. kickoff since that looks like it's going to be more of a reality this season. Um, just what are your general thoughts on possibly playing at 9 a.m.? Um, yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about that, especially with the weather in Pullman. I don't know, but uh, – Obviously, that's going to just be a, a real early and different routine than we're all used to. Um, I guess for television and all that, it's better. But uh, yeah, I don't know personally how I'd feel. I guess it'd be something I'd have to get used to, and along with the rest of the team, because we're used to those, those late Pac-12 games, so it'd be different for sure. Kind of on that similar note, having the Apple Cup in the middle of the season, just from a does, it, does that strike you as weird? Because obviously, I'm not I'm not saying looking at, looking ahead to any games, but just the fact that that's not at the end of the season is that different for you guys at all or is that is that weird at all yeah i mean it's different it's definitely different we're, we're used to it as our very last game besides the bowl game but uh should be interesting i guess both teams are gonna be healthier most likely because it's uh earlier in the season i guess i don't know <laughs> i haven't really thought about that one too much thanks guys And as a reminder, if media have any questions, use the raise hand function. Our next question will come from Kelsey Khaleesi of PBS Cronkite. Hey, Max, thank you so much for your time. Um, with this crazy year, 
we've act, or you've actually gotten an opportunity to be a viewer on college football Saturdays and have gotten to watch teams you could see later on this season, but also watch people in your position. So have you been watching and what's it been like? And have you noticed anything and do you like it or does it drive you a little nuts? Yeah, a little bit of both. I mean, I love football, so I, I tend to want to watch it, but I, I also get pissed off when I'm watching it because I know I should be out on the field playing the same day. So it goes both ways. But, uh, yeah, it's been interesting to watch uh, different teams throughout the country and different running backs who are um, all over the country at different positions too. And, like, uh, as well as Mike Leach and the Air Raid and the SEC, that's been fun to watch. Um, a lot of different teams have been interesting to watch. I watch a lot of football, a lot of NFL as well. But, yeah, uh, n- no one really loves watching football if you should be out there playing. <laughs> understand what's it like uh seeing your old coach in new colors yeah that's a little weird um and from what he's done this season it's been pretty cool to watch i mean that 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 win against lsu is pretty awesome but uh i know he's not too happy with the last few weeks he's had so i'm sure he'll get his boys right and look he'll get it wrong (laughs) awesome thank you so much yeah okay and we'll go back for follow-up from theo lawson Max, can you kind of describe what, what each, of the, each of the three quarterbacks kind of do well back there and what, you, what, you, what you've seen specifically from uh, from Gunnar, Jaden, and Cam after about four or five practices? Yeah, um, they all have their own abilities. That, and all, they all have their own pros and cons, in my own opinion. But uh, I think they're all they're all very educated, very smart, and they all, they're all really getting this offense down. So they're going to be at a, a level playing ground as far as their, uh, their ability to know the offense. But uh, – I think speed is a huge thing. They all have different speeds and uh, people, and then their arm is all different too. Obviously, Cameron's a lefty, he throws a different spiral. And then uh, the other two are righties. And then, um, I don't know, they've all been performing really well. And I've been really trying to like personally pick like, who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? And then I can't do it. It's going to be, it's going to come down to the last practice, I'm sure. Um, it's it's going to be based off statistics and a whole lot of things, I'm sure. Uh, it's not my decision, but uh, they're they're really competing and they're all they're all doing a really good job. Obviously, uh, I'm just excited to see how it turns out because I honestly have no idea where where it's going at this point. One day I'm liking one guy, the next guy, next day I'm liking the next guy. So it's 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 really competitive to say the least. Okay, a follow up from Brennan Green. Max, uh, kind of talking about the quarterback battle a little bit more. Um, does it feel any different than the last two years? Because this is this is your third quarterback battle, so you have some experience in this uh, this situation. I mean, uh, no, because it's always just as competitive. It's always coming down to the last day of camp or so. Um, obviously, we're a Division One football program. It's going to be competitive and. Every, every guy wants that spot, but there's only one quarterback. So it, it feels the same, and the guys bring good juice, good energy, and they're all good leaders. So it's, it's going to be a close battle for sure. And then you mentioned at the beginning just the fact that um, the thing you're most looking forward to is just running more this year, which is only a thing an air raid running back would probably ever say when it comes to offenses. Just um, how, how nice is it for you knowing that that you are going to be used more uh, as a traditional running back this year as opposed to years prior? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm grateful for what I did in the last two years. Uh, I think it was good to get the film of me catching the ball and still running a little bit, but now this is my year to prove who I am and prove why I'm a running back and what I'm, what I'm capable of. Um, I'm definitely interested to, to do all these different run schemes because I know that I'm a great runner and I know that I can prove it to the whole country. I need the opportunity, so. This year's going to be a big, big year, and I'm excited for every opportunity I get from our coaches. Okay, our next question will come from uh, Rusty Simmons, San Francisco Chronicle. Hey, Max, I'm not sure how much thought you've given to the idea of empty stadiums, but wondering, um, depending on what state and local officials do, how much would it mean to you to, to allow – family and friends into into stadiums to watch you guys play this season yeah um i think that's huge um 
obviously our family is our supporting backbone and they love the game just as much as we love the game probably they, they want to come watch what their kids work hard for so and we want them there just as badly so i know um, it could be safe and they could probably be around 150 feet apart inside of the stadium so i think it's crucial that we have family at least there i mean you look at other schools in the country and they all have fans and then even florida has full stadiums at this point so i think it I think it's absurd that we can't even have our own family. So I hope, uh, I hope that changes for sure. You hit on it there. That's what I was going to ask you next. If, if you think it's, it's safe, you've seen now the, the daily protocol that the PAC 12 has for you guys at practices. And, and you mentioned the size of stadiums. Do you think it's possible to do this safely? Yeah, absolutely. As far as you're talking, as far as having your family there. That's it. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, there's what, there's probably not too many families there. <laughs> they could be. They could probably be around 100 feet apart. <laughs> like, the stadium is pretty big, so I think it's completely safe. Right on. Thanks, Max. Yeah, thank you. And our next question will come from Cody Schuler of the Daily Evergreen. Hey, Max. I'm just wondering, obviously the first game of any season is a big one, but uh, – how different is it this year with it being a delayed offseason and a uh, first matchup with Oregon State, which for you last year was a pretty big game with the prediction and the game winning touchdown. So what is it like this year, especially? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, a lot of work ahead for us. We got 24 opportunities ahead of us. Uh, we got to just take it day by day, uh, keep practicing hard. And obviously, Oregon State plays us well every year. So it, it's going to be a great competition. And I, I know that they're going to they're going to be fighting for a win as, as hard as we're going to be fighting for a win. So it's going to be a battle out there. Um, I think it's really going to come down to whoever prepares better. So it starts today. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay. As a reminder, please use the raise hand function to get in the queue for questions. And we'll go back to Brenna Green. Max, I know the the UW game was an important was is always an important game to you, uh, and and I know that Rolovich uh, has a countdown on his phone for that game. Um, does does it feel like there's a greater uh, sense of importance placed on that game around the program this year? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I completely do. Since day one. Coach Rolovich has made it clear that this is one of the biggest rivalries in the state, obviously, and that the importance of this game is huge. Um, I think definitely with this new staff, it's it's been deemed upon that it's it's a big game. And uh, we've been focusing on different looks and different coverages already preparing for that game, even though it's in the middle of the season. I mean, the more you prepare, the better you're going to play. So we're, we're excited for that, and uh, it's going to be a good opportunity whenever that day comes. But definitely just focus on Oregon State as of right now.